Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. How are you today? Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so welcome to the, uh, the uh, EdTech and Primary Teams uh, live stream about the laptop and iPad programs, where we're going to share information with you for next year's iPad and laptop purchases. Um, there's a lot of information to share with you today, and we're going to go through uh, a, 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 a set of uh, information, and these resources will be sent out to you after the live stream including links to the uh, presentation, this video, and the purchasing website. So thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, so I am Sean Moran. I'm the head of educational technology. And with me is uh, Ryan Frakowski, and I'm the head of uh, primary IT. Uh, in addition to the two of us, we have one other person who will be important for the grade five parents, the rising grade sixes. And that's Kieran Edward, and he's going to be the uh, grade level leader for grade six next year. Now, we're just going to touch on why we use digital devices uh, uh, and uh, just to uh, give you some confidence as to why we are asking you to purchase iPads and laptops. There we go. Okay. Um, so the focus in primary is in four sections. Um, our curriculum um, is split into four sections, which is creating, representing, communication, collaboration, it's investigating and problem solving, and responsibility and understanding. Um, and this is something that uh, happens throughout the school year. We always start the year with um, uh, looking back at our responsible use policy, looking at digital citizenship, and building really healthy skills um, to work with technology throughout the school year. Um, and then we go into the areas of creating and representing, uh, where students work a lot on uh, graphic design and uh, work on different creating with different mediums. Uh, and that eventually leads into in investigating and problem solving. A lot of that's where we bring in a lot of the coding and robotics um, and a lot of the teamwork, uh, which, which leads into communication and collaboration. And the digital devices open up opportunities that are not available in traditional pen and paper environments. And that's one of the exciting uh, uh, benefits of having uh, our children use one-to-one -one devices. And uh, in addition to covering these, uh, these uh, areas and these domains, it enhances the learning across all of the uh, subject areas. Okay. Um, so where we, uh, where we take our curriculum from and our inspiration is from the ISTE standards. Um, so these are international standards for technology and education uh, that are split up into seven sections. Um, and these are kind of, these drive what, uh, th these drive our practices. Um, a lot of our resources come from Common Sense Media. So Common Sense Media is wonderful, uh, both for teachers and for parents. Uh, they provide us with a lot of great frameworks and insight into um, you know, living and learning with technology. Yeah, and what these, uh, these uh, frameworks do is they allow us to follow a, a, a structured set of concepts and ideas that allow us to more easily communicate to other teachers and to parents what it is that we're doing, and also, most importantly, to help the students develop an understanding of what it is that they're doing so that they understand that they're constructing knowledge as part of their learning process, but they also have the responsibility to be a good digital citizen. Mm -hmm. And uh, using these frameworks allow us to use consistent terminology and uh, uh, over the uh, entire time that the children are at the ISF, they'll be fam become familiar with these and be able to apply them to themselves and the work that they're doing. The, uh, the other one is important is uh, the uh, Responsible Use Policy, the RUP, and U2R. U2R stands for Unplugged to Recharge. A lot of parents have concerns that their children are spending too much time on their devices. Well, here at school, they do use their devices at times that are appropriate in the classroom. They're not on them constantly or all the time. We have opportunities for the children to step away from their devices either in the classroom or outside of the classroom. So we have opportunities for them to unplug from their devices and just sort of personally recharge themselves. And that happens throughout the school. Now, 
there is a difference between the way in which devices are used at home and the way they are used in the school. Uh, and those are two different domains. And if you uh, tune into some of the information and work that's going to be shared through Lee Ren this year, you'll help, uh, it'll help you as a parent understand the difference between those two and how we can work in partnership with you uh, to support your children to have a healthy relationship with technology. Yeah. And one thing I want to add is that even during te um, technology lessons and technology integration, we do find ways to um, remove students from the screen um, and, and uh, use technology that's not screen-based. So you'll hear them talk about things like microbit and robotics, um, which is not always screen-based. It's, it's taken off into a physical computing device. Mm -hmm. yeah. and a lot of exciting things happen. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, the laptops and iPads allow your children to access the rich set of learning resources that we've got available for them. Uh, it helps them be productive, organized, and create and collaborate with their peers and their teachers. Um, and uh, by now, many of you are very familiar with these platforms, Moodle, PowerSchool, and Google. They are our core learning systems and all of our students are very proficient with these in the way that they need to be. So let's get on to the important stuff for today, the important matters for today, which is the ordering process and deadlines. Okay, um, so uh, as of today, the ordering begins and families can place their orders for their 2024-25 iPad models. Um, information about the iPad this year is shared with parents already through email. Um, and orders are placed directly through Senko MassLink uh, technology, their online store, um, which we have our own uh, personal page for. Um, on the 31st of May is going to be their order deadline. Um, so deadline for start of the year orders, it gives Senko enough time to get the devices ready um, for the start of our school year. Any orders placed after the 31st of May, they may not be ready uh, to be distributed at the start of the school year. Um, so even if you do get in a little bit late, um, just be aware that uh, things may not be ready to, to when we have our um, distribution day in August. Um, and please contact EdTech if you do miss the order deadline and, and our emails are located there for you. Um, during June to August is the preparation. Uh, devices are pre prepared for delivery uh, in August and our distribution date this year is, is Tuesday the 13th of August. Um, so laptops and iPads orders are going to be distributed together to students and families uh, from Charles Cow Square. And we'll send out additional information closer to the date to uh, remind you about this and provide any additional uh, details if there are any changes. Okay. So on Tuesday the 13th of August, device orders are distributed to students and parents and any updates about this will be resent to parents uh, early August. After August 13th, um, laptop orders can be picked up from the IT, IT help desk in Charles Cowell Square during the school day um, and iPad orders will be distributed, distributed directly to your child's classroom. Um, so don't worry if you don't get there on the 13th, uh, your child will get their iPads and their, um, their materials directly delivered to them. And in addition to the information about the iPads and laptops that you can purchase through our purchase program, we're going to share information for families who already have an iPad and laptop and the dates that are important for you. So that'll be a part of this presentation today. Now this is the link that you will need if you are gonna purchase an iPad uh, or laptop from Senko MassLink. This is their store, their online purchasing portal, and we will send this out to you as well. The most important thing is that you register using your parent email account if you haven't already registered. This validates your uh, 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 right to have the education discount. And if you're a family who is just joining the school and you don't have your ISF parent email account yet, you can use a personal email to create your account on the, IS, uh, on the uh, Senko MassLink online portal. Just you'll need to upload the acceptance letter to verify that you qualify for the education discount. And so this is what the Senko MassLink webpage looks like. And as you can see from the diagram, what you'll do is you'll uh, select your school by clicking the drop down and then uh, choosing the ISF Academy. 
and then when you register, you'll use your uh, school account, or if you've already logged in previously, you would use the email address that you used before. And here's what the screen looks like when you register. And again, just to reiterate the point, if you're a new family to the school, welcome to the school, but you'll need to upload a copy of the acceptance letter, and you can see where that is in the center of the screen in the uh, supporting document upload. Once you're in the store, you'll have the option of choosing things for the school one-to-one -one program or other purchase programs. So you will be able to actually purchase items uh, in addition to the laptops or iPads that are available for home use and also enjoy the education discount. Now you can make purchases on home items once a year with the education discount. You can't purchase like five iMacs at the education <laughs> discount. And then when you move into the one-to-one -one program, you'll be able to select the device that you're there to purchase today. And if there are any updates or changes from the information that we share with you today, the Senko MassLink online portal is the one that you will want to uh, follow for the latest information. So now we're going to talk about the laptop and iPad models. And we're going to start off with the iPads. Okay, so uh, our, I our iPad program is entering uh, our fifth year, um, our one-to-one -one iPad program. Uh, it's for students entering uh, grades three, four, and five. Um, and uh, if you have an iPad already, um, we will support it to the best of our ability. Uh, but there are some important specifications required for the iPad, which we are going to mention coming up. Okay. Um, so. Uh, the requirements, if you have a previously purchased iPad, the iPad needs to be less than a year and a half old um, from the start of the school year. So that means purchased by January 2023, um, which is one and a half years before August 2024, the start of our next school year. Uh, the iPad must be compatible with iOS 16 or newer. Um, and the iPad cannot be a part of a, a previous device enrollment program. So that could be at another school or that could be at a business. Um, so when the iPad uh, joins our school's device enrollment program, it's going to be factory, factory reset. So any uh, data or applications installed on it, um, they will be deleted. So we suggest that if you are you're going to use a, a, an iPad that you previously, previously purchased, that um, all the existing data is backed up uh, before delivering the iPad to school because the content that is erased off it or the settings that are erased cannot be recovered. Um, also, if your iPad is, is not the same model and has the same charging uh, function and features as the iPad that we're offering uh, from our program, um, then you may need to supply the cable uh, to, your, to your child's teacher um, so that the iPad can be charged in the classroom. Okay. okay. Um, so, also, Along with the iPad, uh, you need to purchase a few of the following items. Um, a 36-month uh, user license for FileWave. FileWave is our mobile device management system. This is what pushes our settings and our applications to the students' iPads. So they're really customized for student learning in primary. Um, also, uh, over-the-ear headphones, okay? And these are non-Bluetooth headphones. We ask this uh, over-the-ear, okay? Um, with the microphone because the students are going to be doing lots of um, voice recording um, and it's much it's much better if they have a really clear over the ear headphone and a really clear microphone to speak into and we ask for non bluetooth headphones because if we have lots of bluetooth devices in one classroom you can imagine um, it gets very confusing when students are trying to connect it, there's connectivity issues if this if the headphone can plug directly into the ipad then there's going to be no issues with it whatsoever um, and also to purchase one protective case for your child's iPad. Um, we provide a very uh, spongy rubber case, um, and I would suggest if you're, pur if you're purchasing this on your own, you, pur you purchase a similar case. Uh, I know it may not be the most aesthetic aesthetically pleasing case, but it really makes a difference if the iPad drops or bangs up against the wall. Um, it's really good protection for the iPad. So please, um, even if you, if you are gonna purchase your own case, have a look at the case that we're recommending through our program, um, and please purchase something very similar. Uh, and more details about all of this is, are going to be coming up on the, on the coming slides. And they're all, all of these items are, are available through the Senko MassLink Purchase Portal. 
And additionally, the Bluetooth items need to be charged, and we don't have the capacity to guarantee that items will be charged on a regular basis for your child. Uh, we do for the iPads because we have cabinets where they're stored in and kept safely. Uh, but for uh, additional devices and, or, and, and items and accessories, we don't. Um, so again, just please no Bluetooth headphones. Now for the warranty, um, there okay. you go. Um, so yes, the warranty of your iPad, um, if you're bringing one in from home, may not cover the full years, uh, the full three years that the iPad is going to be used here in primary. Um, so under certain repair conditions, your iPad may not be eligible for the school's um, IT help desk. You can purchase an extended warranty through uh, Senko MassLink. Um, conditions and limitations may apply, and you'll want to contact them directly for that. Uh, for any configuration, the iPad needs to be dropped off at the IT help desk at the start of the school year to be configured and get ready for school usage um, through the management uh, device, uh, mobile device management platform that we use. Um, due to the number of students being supported during this time of year, uh, it can take up to five days for it to be configured. Um, and it cannot be done earlier over the summer um, because that's when things are getting prepared for the start of the school year. Uh, iPads be, will be returned to your child's classroom after it's been configured. Um, it'll be directly delivered by a IT staff. Yeah. Now on that, uh, again, we want to assure you, we can support you as a family if you already have an existing iPad. And we will do the, uh, uh, provide the best service and support that we can. Um, for laptops that are uh, a year and a half old, the idea is that they're going to be used for the next three years. So uh, these iPads will be entering a, a, a four, four and a half year long lifespan, which is about the full length of an iPad. And they can last that long. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we, we like the Apple products is they are very reliable. Um, but during that uh, 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 time, if you even have extended warranty for your existing iPad, the warranty will expire uh, during the time in which your child will be using the device at school. Yeah. Um, uh, and as far as the on-site service and support, Senko MassLink will do the best they can to help any families who do have devices that are under the existing Apple Care warranty, but there are some limitations to, uh, to what is available. And it may require you to uh, travel to an actual Apple store for service and support if necessary. So our model this year in our package, we're going to talk a little bit about the school bundle and the items that are provided. Um, so this year our, our uh, price is $57.96, um, which is going to provide a 10th generation model iPad in silver color. Um, we have a three-year Apple Care warranty, um, which is up from two years, um, which will be able to help service on site. Um, terms and conditions, once again, the service fees do apply uh, through Senko MassLink. Um, we, we provide an iPad protective case, uh, which I talked about, the real spongy rubber case that protects it really well over the ear headphones that are with microphone, non-Bluetooth headphones, and then a USB-C to three millimeter headphone adapter so that the students can use the uh, headphones that are provided uh, with their iPad. Also a file wave license for 36 months, which is gonna cover them for their time in years three to five with these settings and the applications that are gonna be uh, there to support their learning. So it's really nice because you can just buy the device and everything here is taken care of for you. Okay, so some further details, the size of the iPad is 10.9 inches. Um, it's connected to our, our school Wi-Fi and has a storage which has increased uh, to 256 gigabytes. Um, the screen is now 10.2, uh, sorry, 10.9 inches uh, with a higher resolution. So it's gonna be easier to read, easier on the eyes for the students. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, our, with the storage being higher, it's gonna be a really dynamic device. Um, it has an A4, A14 Bionic chip, um, so it's going to run really quickly, which is up from the A13 chip. Um, the battery life uh, with normal usage is gonna last the entire school day. So there should be no issues if the iPads are being charged um, overnight in the iPad charging cables or ca cabinets. Uh, has a great camera, uh, can support 4K video, um, with stereo speakers, two microphones, and uh, the color, once again, is silver. Yeah. 
So talking a little bit about our, our updated warranty. So now we have a three-year Apple Care warranty, um, including uh, unlimited accidents and accidental damage, which do take place sometimes. Um, you know, technology is, uh, it's, 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 it, it is just a, a physical device and we do sometimes have issues with damage. Um, so now they're covered. Uh, and each incident, in, each incident is going to be subject to a service fee um, from Senko Masslink, so just keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> also, we have three years pickup and return on-site service. Uh, so that's on-site service uh, from our IT help desk, um, which is a required purchase with Apple Care, $250. Um, and once again, please refer to any of the, 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 the terms and conditions from Senko and from Apple. And we're excited about the uh, change to the uh, Apple Care warranty because this year it has uh, been extended to three years. Previously, it was only two, two years. Yeah. So this has been uh, a, a change that Apple made in response to the uh, demand and uh, need to support children. Okay. FileWave is our mobile device management system. Um, once again, if you have your own device, uh, you'll need to purchase this because uh, we want to make sure that your, your child's device is set up with um, the conditions and the applications for learning. Mm -hmm. And it, it allows us to push apps out to your child and make adjustments to the configurations uh, should we need it. It's a, been a really helpful tool and it also helps us uh, manage uh, you know, uh, several hundred um, devices. Okay. So this is a look at what our protective case looks like. Um, which is really great protection against any kind of, any kind of damages. Um, please, if you are purchasing a case on your own, please purchase something like it. Um, I know you know people tend to, to like to buy these really slick cases with um, the keyboard attached and really um, uh, you know really nice uh, small cases. But these chunky cases really do a lot for protection uh, for our child's devices. Well, and on that, yeah. um, for keyboards, we provide keyboards, Bluetooth yeah. keyboards here in school. Yeah. And they're stored in the, your child's classroom. Yeah. And whenever the child needs to do uh, uh, writing or um, uh, essays uh, or, or even tests, yeah. we do provide a keyboard for them. So you don't need to provide one yourself. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, if you do provide one, they probably won't even use it because for a lot of the things that are done in class, we like to keep the keyboard standardized because the keyboards we have are a full-size keyboard. Um, it's really nice and easy for the students to use them. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so once again, uh, I stress about the, the importance of over-the-ear headphones with uh, a microphone um, and non-Bluetooth headphones uh, so that we can make sure there's no disruptions during learning time in the classroom. What's nice about these Bluetooth headphones, that's uh, right, come here. What's nice about these particular headphones is that the uh, microphone can uh, detach if we, d if we need to get it out of the way. But we also have this nice feature called buddy listening. So if we assign children to work together and it requires the watching of a video or even recording, these headphones can daisy chain together, snap together, uh, and you can see the diagram in the middle of the screen uh, illustrating that. Um, and it's really helpful for keeping the children focused when they're, when they're partnered with somebody and they're uh, performing a task. So it's a subtle little thing about these headphones mm -hmm. that has got quite a big impact on the classroom. Yeah, for collaboration. Um, I know there are some other child's headphones, children's headphones that do have this feature. Um, if you are purchasing one on your own um, and you want to go with another company's headphones, please try to get that, um, that buddy jack sharing or just the, the sharing so that we can uh, have that collaboration happening in, in, this, in the class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, if um, you, you know, we're going to we're going to provide the USB-C to 3.5 uh, millimeter headphone jack so that the headphones can be plugged into the iPad, please purchase that on your own uh, or through Senko Mass Link if you already have an iPad. Yeah, and actually on that one, if you do have your own device and you need these accessories, you can purchase the accessories by themselves mm. through the Senko MassLink online purchasing portal yeah. and uh, save yourself some uh, 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 challenges finding these in stores uh, around Hong Kong. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll be delivered directly to your child's classroom. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, we ask that please don't send in any Apple pencils to school. Um, we have something that we use called the Logitech Crayon. 
Uh, it's very uh, nicely, you know, it's larger, it's nice, nicely gripped by students with small hands um, to be used then with the iPad. Uh, if they do bring an Apple Pencil to school, um, once again, they, they won't use it because um, we provide enough Logitech crayons in all of the student specialist classes uh, so that students are able to, to draw and design on the iPad. And if it, anything is brought in, so for example, an external keyboard, a pencil, the school is not responsible for any of these items, so uh, better to keep it at home and use it for home use uh, because we have uh, adequate resources here at school. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to the laptop program and share information with you uh, for the laptops. And just like with the iPads, if you already have a laptop, that's great, awesome. Uh, we can support you to the best of our ability, but there are some minimum specifications and requirements for the laptop. Uh, and uh, the laptops have to be at least 13 or 14 inches in screen size. They should have 256 gigabytes in storage minimum, and uh, we generally recommend that laptops be no older than two years at the, uh, from the start of the school year. Older laptops begin to uh, show performance issues as they uh, continue to use them. Um, the uh, 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 laptop should last anywhere from three to four years if it's well taken care of. Now this year, one thing that has changed is that Apple has released a new version of the MacBook Air. And so, uh, not to complicate things, we have four models available for you. And we'll go through these, talk about the specs of them, and also our recommendations for which one is a, a good one for you to, to select for your child. But at the bottom line, any one of these models will absolutely support your child and the learning that they will do as they go through the secondary school. For children in the upper end of the school, the more senior students, depending on the subjects that they select, they may need a slightly more powerful MacBook, and that would be for a student who's taking design, computer, uh, computer science, visual arts, or filmmaking if we, uh, if we get that course um, started. Like the iPads, all laptops come with three-year warranty, Apple Care warranty, and that covers hardware damage and up to two incidences of accidental damage. For each uh, uh, set of repairs, there is a handling service fee of $799, and um, uh, that covers uh, 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 incidental costs related to the uh, repairs and service and support. But for minor services and support, the children can just go to our help desk in Charles Cow Square and get the assistance that they need. Included with each of the laptop purchases is a USB-C to USB-A adapter or USB 3.0 adapter. And that's necessary for uh, the, your child to be able to connect to external devices and accessories that we might use in the classroom. For example, in the science labs, we use a product called Vernier, which has sensors that uh, at the moment still are using USB-A or 3.0, the square rectangle USB adapter. So it's important for your child to have this adapter. If you buy your laptop through the purchase program, it will come included. If you're going to send your child to school with uh, a, a, a previously owned device or currently owned device, Please make sure that you support both USB-C and USB-A or 3.5, uh, 3.0 jack, uh, or purchase an adapter. So for the first package, package A, the MacBook Air 13 inch, uh, it's $9,772, and it has the M2 8 core uh, CPU with eight gig of uh, uh, memory and 256 core, uh, gigabytes of storage and a 13.6 inch screen with a weight of 1.24 kilograms. It's a great device. It has enough power to meet all of the needs that our children would be, uh, uh, all the work needs that our children will be doing. And uh, it has enough adapters for the, uh, 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 your child to both simultaneously plug in the laptop should they need it and also uh, connect to accessories if they're working on something that uses uh, external devices. 
devices or accessories. Our new model is the Package B MacBook Air 13 inch and it's $13,566. It has the new M3 CPU which was just released this year and it has an additional set of memory, 16 gigabytes, which allows a higher set of processing and is good for students who are very interested in doing media. It allows you to render larger video files or handle longer video files and uh, also comes with 512 gigabytes of storage to store those additional uh, files. Um, this one would be for a power user and is not necessary for the standard user in our school. Our package C model, the MacBook Pro 14 inch, is a, again slightly more powerful. It's got the Apple M3 in it and is for $15,076. It has eight gigabytes of memory, but it also comes with the larger storage of 512 gigabytes. The screen is slightly larger at 14.2 inches and weighs 1.55 kilograms. Now, the difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 14 inch is not huge. And uh, you basically will want to decide whether you want to provide the larger storage space for your child. So the package A MacBook Air, again, is a M2, which is a previous year's uh, uh, CPU whereas the MacBook Pro 14 has got the current M3 chip in it with slightly, sto slightly larger storage. Uh, both of these will, will, will work for your child. Package D is for our more senior students and is not necessary for any student in grade six, seven, or eight unless they have already demonstrated that they are a heavy video editor. Um, uh, so uh, please don't feel that you have to get this at all. This one is, uh, as I said, uh, uh, focused more on our more senior students doing more advanced work. And it's, as you can see, $17,556. Has the M3 Pro chip, which is a faster chip, the larger memory, 18 gigabytes, and the larger storage, 512 gigabytes. All of these models support the latest Mac OS X, and come with the uh, App Store, GarageBand, iMovie, and a uh, uh, storage large enough for your child to do the work in. Now, for accessories, we don't recommend a lot, but we do recommend a backpack that has got a nice slip space for your laptop, your child's laptop to slip into and be held securely in their backpack. Uh, a lot of times a really good back, uh, backpack will have a Velcro latch that will go over the top of the laptop to prevent it from flying out should the top zipper be open on the laptop. We do recommend that you get a protective case, a snap-on protective case, just to help it for the daily bumps and scrapes that do happen. And uh, occasionally it can be useful, but you don't need it right away. An extra USB-C to USB adapter. Um, unfortunately, these are small enough that sometimes students do misplace them or they are doing a lot of work and they actually need to adapt up to USB-C devices, uh, sorry, USB-A devices. An external hard drive for backing up the laptop is good, but I, I have a better recommendation for backing up the laptop should you do it. And we don't need Apple Pencils for laptops. Going to the next step, we're talking about the start of year distribution and dropping devices off for configuration. And this is going to apply for both the iPads and the laptops. On August 13th, laptops and iPads are going to be directly distributed to parents and students in the week before school starts. And as, as Ryan was mentioning earlier, um, uh, uh, this is an opportunity for you as a family with your child to come in pick up the device, come uh, verify your order, and then take it home to get familiar with it. Um, the uh, uh, pickup process will start at about 9 a.m. in the morning and go until about 4.30. Uh, we will have staff on hand who can help you and answer any questions about the device if you have them when you're picking it up. Uh, but for laptops, um, 
sorry, no, this is actually correct for both iPads and laptops. Uh, you need to, of course, make sure that they are brought back on the first day of school. Yeah. And just to note, we'll have um, staff that can speak both languages uh, to support all families that have any questions on that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now, for iPads and laptops that are not purchased through the Senko Purchase Portal, they can be brought in and dropped off at the IT Help Desk. I'm going to send additional information about this to you directly in email where I'll provide some of the conditions for dropping your devices off. One of the conditions, and this one's so important that I'm going to mention it here, is that when you bring the device in, um, you will either, uh, in the case of iPads, the device will be given back to your child directly in class. So for example, let's say you drop your iPad off on a Monday, but school doesn't start until Wednesday. Uh, uh, you will, the IT department will configure it, and then on Wednesday when your child comes to school, the iPad will be in their classroom for them. Uh, so you don't need to come back and pick it up. And that's really, uh, really important. Uh, it, it makes sure that the device is ready for the start of the day, mm -hmm. that there's no changes made to it uh, that cause problems when we, when we begin uh, lessons in class. And, and just be aware that, you know, the first few days we are distributing a lot of the devices that have been dropped off by families. Um, so there won't be heavy usage of technology during those days by the teachers. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they know how to manage this very well. For laptops, if you bring your laptop in to configure it, you will need to leave it for a minimum of 24 hours. That's because the IT department is going to be very busy at the start of the year getting everybody ready to go. And... Um, uh, you'll need to come back and pick it up. They will let you know how long they need the device and uh, uh, when you can pick it up. This will be uh, dependent on how many devices they're servicing at the start of the year. And again, I will email you all directly with information on this particular uh, um, uh, point. But one final thing is about the data on the iPads. Please, please back up any data that you have on family-owned iPads. Um, the, the devices will be completely erased, and once they're erased, we cannot recover any data. Yeah. Now, for you, we recognize that you will need support through this process as well, and we have a lot of resources available for you. We have a website called Shunyu, the hub, and on the hub, you'll be able to find information about the one-to-one -one program, including the resources that we've discussed today and links to the purchase portal. Um, there's information on the iPad program and the laptop program. And the, it will have the latest information for you with regard to uh, device drop-off. So if there are any updates, this is the best place to uh, check to find out the latest information. And then you've also got us and the IT department. You can email us or visit us in the uh, uh, IT uh, visit uh, the IT help desk in Charles Cow Square. If you make a purchase and you have questions about your purchase, our IT department and the EdTech department won't be able to answer any questions about uh, orders placed. So please contact Senko MassLink directly. Uh, the uh, phone number and email address are on the screen, but you will also have this information in the package of, of, of stuff we send out to you. Yeah, and also it's a good thing is if you need anything um, immediately and you need something in a pinch, just feel free to go to the Apple store directly, um, especially if it's something like a cable that the, your child needs for the next day sort of thing. Uh, the Apple store will be able to support you. Both the iPad and Apple laptops support the app support and an app app store tripping over that the apple app store is really useful now uh, a lot of parents will be concerned about their child having access to the app store but there's a great way to configure this uh, there's a, the uh, something called family accounts where you as the parent uh, can control anything that your child would purchase it is important for your child to have an Apple App Store account. Uh, this allows them to get updates for their device. It's more important for your child to have an Apple App Store account for 
laptops than it is for the iPads. The iPad, they don't necessarily need it, but for the laptops, they definitely need it. This allows them to update iMovie, GarageBand, or the operating system. Uh, and if you configure it using the family account settings, they cannot make purchases unless you give them permission to, which is a great way, uh, checks and balances, and also allows you to have an opportunity to have a conversation about things that they're interested in. But please do create for the students going into grade six an Apple App Store account. And, and for primary, um, as we said about our, our mobile device management system, um, we push the apps directly to your child's uh, iPads. Uh, sometimes when we need to run an update, um, we need to access um, a app store that's provided by FileWave, which has all of the apps that have been uh, approved for your child. Um, so they won't be accessing the Apple App Store directly, they'll be accessing the one from FileWave, um, which has all of the, um, the apps that have been set up for them. And this is what the Apple family sharing uh, icon looks like. And you can look for this on the Apple App Store help pages. I will be sending a link to you on this. Um, it is, uh, uh, I use it with my family. It's a wonderful, it's well thought out, well managed resource. And um, I, I do recommend it. But there's one important point about this. Please do not create an Apple App Store account for your child using their ISF email address. It has to be a personal email address. The reason for that is, should you ever uh, make purchases as a family through the Apple App Store, and when your child graduates ISF or leaves ISF, you don't want to have that account attached to their ISF email address. Mm -hmm. So again, please do not create an Apple account for your child using their ISF email. Please do use a personal, a personal Gmail or uh, other, other email account. These links to the instructions for setting up family accounts will be emailed out to you. And additionally, we have on the Shunyu website resources for you as a parent where you can look through these for guidance and support with how to talk with your child about technology and gaming and how to help, help you uh, set boundaries with your child. This is a resource that is updated uh, regularly. But uh, from this, we take a lot of inspiration and guidance from resources such as uh, Common Sense Media. Highly recommend you check it out. Common Sense Media is a wonderful platform of well-researched, well-thought-out advice for both parents and educators. And we use it for our own uh, internal guidance setting with this, the, the children. Mm -hmm. And we highly recommend that you have a look at that um, as a parent. Yeah, and um, you know we, we do give uh, presentations to parents throughout the year, um, and they're always update, uh, uploaded to this space. So even if you perhaps missed last year's presentation and you want to review it uh, before coming into the new school year, you can go directly to Shunyu and uh, see the presentation and go through it there. All right. Now, contacting us, here's our contact details for both EdTech and IT support and info uh, at uh, Senko. And uh, uh, these links are available in the content we send you. Now, before we end, and thank you for joining us, we have some questions that we're going to go through that were sent in to us. Um, let me bring this up real quick. Okay, so thank you very much for sending in your questions. And um, uh, we will uh, hopefully be able to answer all of them for you. But if you have any follow-ups, please do um, email those to us. For the first one, the, the laptop program, uh, the question is how many years will they, uh, students use their laptop? A laptop, uh, a current modern laptop has a lifespan about three to four years. And if it's well taken care of, it, it'll easily last that long, uh, four years. Um, when they start to go into the upper end of secondary school, it will be worth considering purchasing a new laptop depending on the state of your child's existing laptop, 
Um, I have three children and who went through laptop programs and uh, for each one of them I did buy two laptops through the course of their entire secondary school uh, journey. Will my child have more homework submitted via online or online via their iPad? Um, no, so the, the iPad actually stays at school um, for basically the entirety of the school year. The only time that it can be taken home is during our, lo our longer breaks, which is Chinese, uh, Chinese New Year and Christmas break. Um, and a Google form will be sent out before those breaks uh, for, for parents to indicate if they would like that device uh, to be sent home. So there won't necessarily be online homework during the weekend um, because you know, the expectation is that the iPad is uh, at school the whole year. Um, also, there's a, a question about if, it, if the iPad is going to replace physical textbooks. Um, and the answer to that is no. There's still lots of books that students uh, access in the classroom for, um, for rich uh, information. Uh, the iPad is just another resource to support their learning, um, not necessarily a replacement of any of the resources that they would normally have. Uh, on that one, yeah. I, I absolutely love books. Uh, I, I love going into bookstores. Yeah. I love the smell of them. I love the <laughs> touch and feel of them. Yeah. Uh, but one of the benefits of uh, a, a device like an iPad is that you have access to books and resources that you can't have access to in the physical world, unfortunately. Um, as much as I'd love to have children have access to every book possible, it's just not, not feasible. Um, so it's a nice complement to the physical yes. textbooks that the students uh, will use in their classrooms. Sure. And then the other one is about screen time and uh, how much screen time they have in, the, in their classes. Yeah, it, it always varies. It depends on what the learning engagement is. Um, obviously, the, you know, during IT classes, there are gonna be, you know, uh, most of classes are, are gonna be um, higher in screen time because a lot of what they're doing is uh, online on the device, but during their normal classes, um, it, it, just, it just varies if, some, if, they're, if they're doing something that's research heavy or they're, um, you know, they're doing some typing or, or whatever it may be then some days there may be more screen time than others, but there's gonna be days where they barely use an iPad as well, where they're doing lots of physical activity um, and hands-on hands -on learning if they're going to the maker space or the STEM and art space or whatever it may be. Um, so it's very balanced just depending on uh, what the subject is and what the learning engagement is at that time. And then this is an important uh, point to, to, to make sure you, you catch, because uh, this is something we're obviously all concerned about is children having screen time. There are different types of screen time. Mm. There are the Sunday afternoon sitting down playing four hours on a game where you're just completely focused on the iPad or laptop for extended periods of time. Yeah. That's not the healthiest form of screen time. But in school, our children are not locked to the device entirely. Through the course of a single class in a 40 minute period, they're not in staring at the screen the entire time. No. There's They'll, they'll do some work on the screen. Even if they're doing a, a, an intensively digital piece of work, they'll, they'll uh, work on the device, then the teacher will uh, call, their, uh, call them to attention and they'll look up and they'll look far away and uh, pay attention to the teacher for a moment. And then uh, during the course of the work, they'll turn to their, their, their peer sitting next to them and have a conversation yeah. and then go back to the work. It's not a uh, constant period of time that they're staring at their screens. And that's actually the kind of behavior that we want the children to follow. We follow very strongly something called the 20-20-20 yeah. rule. And that is every 20 minutes, you should look up at something about 20 meters away for 20 seconds. We exceed that expectation uh, massively. As I said, in the course of a, a single 40-minute class, the children are going to be looking at their device, looking up at their teacher across the room, yeah. looking at the person sitting next to them, or talking to another student off to their, their side. They're never at any single point just constantly staring at screens. And, and even during their IT lessons, if, as I said, um, when we're using uh, physical computing devices and robotics, um, they may need to use an iPad for coding, but then once they, once they transfer the program onto their physical computing device, their, their eyes are off the screen. So, um, it's not just a constant screen. It's, 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 there's natural breaks uh, based on the learning intentions. Yeah. Now the next question is about protecting the children from content online. Mm. Now on the device we don't have filters 
uh, uh, built into the, the actual devices. But here on campus, we have filters built into our school network and our, our, our internet connection called a firewall. And that firewall does prevent access to content that is not age appropriate. Now, I don't want to uh, uh, misrepresent anything here. No system is perfect, and a creative person or student or adult can always find ways around systems that prevent them accessing content they maybe shouldn't have. We're active on this with our children, and we have conversations with them all the time about what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. And should a child access something that is inappropriate, we have conversations with them. Now, we also do factor into this age-appropriate questions that the children will have. And so it's, we don't follow a punitive process. We follow an instructive or educational process. So if a child is looking for something that, that may be slightly questionable, we engage with them in that conversation, try to understand why they're, why they're searching that information out, and provide the appropriate type of guidance that they need uh, to, uh, to, to uh, uh, address the topic. But our children don't have free reign with their internet access here at the school. Um, and uh, there's one dimension to this question by the parent is, you know, there are natural developments that children have as they grow and uh, have questions about their bodies and how they're changing or uh, other topics in the world. And this uh, is addressed both by uh, the teachers and we hope you as a parent by actively engaging in your child's life. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the best process that we can do for any of our children is to be engaged with them and ask them about their interest and what they're looking for. No system is perfect for blocking that, so it comes down to a human, human interaction uh, to best prepare our children for the types of questions that they have. Yeah. And, and in primary, um, you know, when something is accessed uh, that may not be appropriate, it's a really great opportunity for us to sit with the, with students um, and set some goals for the future because, uh, you know, they're still early on with their learning uh, of, you know, the internet space and all the, uh, all the content that's out there. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us to really set the goals, work with them to achieve these goals, uh, both here at school and at home. Um, in classes, uh, in, in, in grades three to five, uh, we do have a platform called Apple Classroom where we do monitor uh, students' devices and screens um, throughout the course of a class. Uh, it provides us very important information like which app are they working on. It gives us a, um, a view into their screen to see what they're doing. This is 100% for their protection, um, you know, so that if any situations do arise, we can have that conversation with them. We can set goals with them, not uh, whatsoever as, as a punitive measure, but as a learning measure. Yeah. And we got asked uh, if you already have a laptop or iPad, do you need to buy a, a new one? Um, I hope we've covered that sufficiently. And obviously the answer by now is no. You can use that device as long as it does meet some of the minimum requirements. And those minimum requirements, uh, you can either go back and review the earlier comments made in this video or have a look at the Shunyu website for the details. Mm. And how many years a student would use the device is, is three to four years. Now this question does come up. Uh, the packages on Edu offer uh, by Senko Masslink uh, are more expensive than those in the Apple app, uh, Apple Store. Uh, yes, they are because they are a package of of, uh, uh, of of devices and accessories that enhance the 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 device by itself. If you want to purchase directly from the Apple Store, please do. But you'll need to then go through and purchase the additional accessories, like FileWave headphones, an, ex, uh, an adapter, a case. Um, uh, but uh, the nice thing with the Edu offer is that everything is taken care of for you. It's configured and delivered to the school, um, uh, 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 pre-configured for you, uh, your child to use on the first day of school. The last question that we've got is that there are some more powerful models available for the, the uh, uh, for purchase through the Senko MassLink mm -hmm. website. Um, you don't need to purchase a more expensive, powerful laptop for your child. 
it, it would be um, uh, underutilized by your child in grade sixes, the grade six, seven, and eight. You don't need to buy one for them unless they are, as I said, heavily uh, involved in media editing. Um, even for the computer science, a child who's really interested in computer science, packages A, B, or C are fully sufficient for what your child would need to do in, in uh, the uh, lower end of secondary school. I would instead recommend that you take the money that you'd spend on a more powerful laptop and buy quality accessories uh, and um, uh, protective uh, items for your, your child's laptop, like a good backpack or case. Or use one of the online services, such as Carbonite, to back up your child's laptop. Those are, would be a, a much better uh, way of uh, spending your money instead of buying a more expensive laptop. And, and for the iPad as well, um, there is no need to buy an iPad Pro for your child. Um, I know some, some parents ha have sent iPad Pros with students in the past and really, um, you know, they didn't need it. They didn't use, they didn't use it to, to its full capability just because of the nature of primary, the standard iPad that we are, uh, offer, on this, uh, are offer on the package is more than enough for what your child needs from grades three to five. We hope we've answered all your questions. We're always available for you if you ha do have additional questions. And so with that, we'd like to say thank you very much for joining us and take care, have a great summer, and we look forward to working with your children next year in the one-to-one -one program. Thank you very much, nice to see you. Thank you.